Hey everybody, just back here with another video. So CTV uh, caught Trudeau on camera basically in an in a tense exchange with an average Canadian worker up in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Um, so let's uh, we're going to have a look at this video and then we'll talk about it like usual. But before we get into that, please make sure that you are hitting that like and subscribe button as it really, really helps grow this channel. And I appreciate every single one of you that does do that for me as well. If you could leave your comments in the comment section, I always enjoy reading your opinions as well. So let's get into this video. It is a little bit hard to hear, so I did turn the captions on. So I'll leave those on as well. And then we'll talk about it like after, like usual after. Ouch. Guy didn't even want to shake Trudeau's hand. And you know what? I can't really blame him. I mean, you saw it right there, right? I mean, the guy's talking and saying, hey, you're not doing anything for us. You're probably going to be out of here in a year, et cetera, et cetera. And Trudeau's just like, oh, well, look at these new policies. Yeah, he just keeps interrupting him with his policies that at this point, no matter what he says, no one believes him anymore. Like you've had nine years and now it's like, oh, now we're thinking about the Canadian middle class. Now we're thinking about buying homes. Now we're thinking about, you know, deporting some of the, the people they've let in with this mass immigration program. Oh, now they're thinking about it. Yeah. Now that they're getting hammered in the polls and they have been for about a year. Now they want to think about it. Now they want to go out and tell people that, hey, we're here to fight for you, Canada. Who in their right mind after nine years would believe that in the first place? I know I sure as hell don't. Do you? I mean, it's just, now that being said, this uh, this is not a good look for Justin Trudeau, right? Like, it's another, yeah, there were some people there who seemed to like him, or at least the fact that he brought donuts for everyone. They like that, for sure. I don't know if they like him, but this guy, he didn't give a shit about donuts. He said, listen, we don't trust you. We don't believe you. We don't think you're in this for Canada or Canadians, right? It's like, basically, he's just, like, Justin Trudeau is just pandering to get some of the supporters back, which are pretty much gone, at least for an, a, a long time now. But this guy, you know, you can't blame him. He's pissed off. He's he's working hard every day and he's got some debt. Everything's so expensive. There's not enough homes. It's going to take years to fix this problem. And Justin Trudeau's, oh, no, we're actually, we are helping you. It's like, and the guy's like, well, no, my, my neighbor doesn't work and we live the same life. Now, if you're not working, I'm not saying you should be like homeless or on the street or anything like that. I don't believe that for a second. I don't think anyone should be homeless. But if you're working, you should have a better life. And as you're seeing, there's a lot of spe uh, specifically young men right now leaving the workforce. I've seen uh, multiple videos on X or on YouTube of uh, people just saying, hey, I had a job for the last 15 years, but all this hard work has got me nothing. I don't have any enough saved to buy a home. I have to work more and more to make up for the taxes and to make up for everything just increasingly getting more and more expensive. When you work overtime or you work extra, you should be doing that to get ahead, not to maintain. That's what overtime is supposed to be for. We're getting a second job. Those are supposed to be to get ahead. And they're not. A basic job, like a basic warehouse job should get you a basic life. Decent apartment, decent form of transportation, enough money to buy you know, food and pay the other bills, enough money to save a little bit, and enough money to spend a little bit. It wasn't that long ago where you could do that. right? I, I remember being 20 years old. I lived uh, with my girlfriend at the time downtown Burlington. She wasn't working for the first three months 
And we were fine. All the bills were paid. We always had food. We always had a little bit of extra money. That same apartment back then in 2008, sorry, 2009, it was $700 to rent that one bedroom in downtown Burlington. That same place is now about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. And it's not like a luxury apartment by any, it's, it's a decent little place, right? But I mean, it was just, it's just ridiculous how much you know, like rent has gone up and how much the, the housing market and inflation and all these taxes and now it's expensive to get groceries. It's just all the national debt, the immigration, the crime rate. It's just everything that's bad under Justin Trudeau has gone up and up and up. And now you've got guys like this saying, hey, it's not you're making it like not even worth working anymore. There's a lot of people who would just like get a camper, right? If you have a little bit of money saved up, you can buy something for a few thousand bucks and just quit your job and go basically permanently camping. Basically. And that's what a lot of people are doing. I think a lot of people would actually be more happy living like that than working 60 hours a week at a job they hate just to just to get by. Right? It's bullshit. No one wants to do that. People, that's not what our lives are meant for. You're not supposed to be spending that much time working just to maintain a very, very basic life. 60 hours is for someone who wants to get ahead and save up an extra few hundred bucks a month. That after a few years will get you a down payment on a house. Well, that's not possible now. What, what If you save up 10 grand in five years, say, you're not using, you can't use that. What do you buying like you're buying a like a you're putting a down payment on an rv condos in hamilton are hundreds of thousands of dollars now 10 grand isn't even enough to get you a minimum down payment it's just like so what's the point and that's what i mean a lot of people are feeling helpless and hopeless and you know what when people are helpless hopeless depressed sick it's really hard to stand up against it's, it's really easy to control a population when they are helpless, hopeless, depressed, and sick. It seems like every single thing that Justin Trudeau has done, or all of his policies, has increased all of these things. There isn't a single politician in Canada who's looking at like what's going on with, with what's in our food and water. right? Which is a thing that I would really wish that Pierre Paul Yev would step up and talk about. Take a note from Robert Kennedy Jr. and just, hey, look, look at the chronic disease issues amongst children. It's going up and up and up. We're all sick. <laughs> like, let's let's fix that. And I wish Pierre Polyev would talk about that, but I haven't heard much of that at all from him. Actually, I don't think he's mentioned it once. So, that, again, he needs to do a better job in talking about that, too. Um, you know, But with Trudeau specifically, you know that he there's no interest for him to make people more healthy. There's no interest for him at all to do it. Okay, when you're bought and paid for by Big Pharma... Which, again, that's a huge concern for Pierre Polyev, too. But if you're bought and paid for by Big Pharma, you'll never do anything about the chronic health issues. Never. Because the Big Pharma, the Big Pharma, sorry, they want people to be sick so that they make more money because then you have to take their drugs, right? So there's so many problems. Now you have steel workers in Algo uh, for Algoma up in Sault Ste. Marie basically calling him out to his face. And this is happening. He gets heckled basically everywhere he goes. But now you have someone here actually giving him the facts like, hey, listen, you're not helping. You're not going to be here for much longer. And we don't believe you anymore. And that's what happens when you've been a prime minister for almost 10 years and have never really done anything good, especially the last four or five years. It's been a disaster. But that, that's what happens. You get in and then, you know, you start making all these horrible policy changes. And it takes a few years for those to, you know, develop and actually show you the results. And then we see the results and it's like, oh my God, we got to get this guy out of here. Hopefully we can get, we can do that sooner or later, but let me know what you guys think. Do you guys share the same frustrations as this gentleman in the red shirt? Do you think that, you know, working overtime should get you more than just a basic life? Let me know what you guys think. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe again. It really helps grow this channel. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.